Uh, okay, um, so I'm going to share a screen with some slides. Um, can you see my screen? Could somebody give me a quick feedback that everything is working? That would be great. Andre? Yes, we can. <laughs> great. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, we're, we're really happy to be here at uh, Coding Da Vinci. Thanks to uh, Annalita who uh, invited us. Um, uh, we are um, Andre and Mark. I'm Mark uh, from, from Extatis. And we're going to hold this uh, talk together. And um, I'm going to start and do the first part. Uh, so the topic for today is um, reading in pictures with AI. Uh, I hope uh, that during the talk it will become clear what, what we mean by that. Um, so more specifically, we're going to explain what multimodal models are and how these models bring images and uh, language together into one space. Um, and this is um, a very powerful foundation for some interesting applications um, that we're going to show you. And most importantly, uh, we'll show you how you can apply this uh, technology um, by yourself on your own data sets, if you like. So yeah, we, are, we founded uh, the company Extatus together, Andre and I, um, uh, a good year ago. So we're a young, a young company, and we specialize in uh, building applications based on AI. Um, and our, um, yeah, we specialize in, in search, in understanding text, and in recognizing images. Um, and the technolo technology that we're going to show you today is actually um, a technology that we use in our apps to build our applications. Um, so yeah, this is the agenda for today. Um, so there are two parts. Um, the first part, I will uh, talk um, about, uh, about the topics, uh, give you a, a broad overview, explain um, a, a little bit of the theory behind it. Uh, and then in the second part, uh, Andre will take over and do a live coding session where he uh, shows you how you can um, work with this technology yourself. So we'll start. Uh, with the question, what what is AI, or um, what what do um, people usually uh, refer to? What do they mean when they talk about AI? So I, AI is the science that tries to build systems that uh, replicate human intelligence through rules. And um, a, there's been a very uh, big hype and a big buzz around. Uh, AI uh, in the last uh, few years, as you uh, all probably uh, know. And um, this uh, hype is actually due mostly uh, to um, a specific subfield of AI called deep learning. So when, when people talk about AI, then they, maybe 90% of the time, uh, they, are actually, uh, they are actually talking about deep learning. So um, what is deep learning? Deep learning is a, is a subfield, again, of uh, machine learning. And um, in machine learning, these rules um, that try to replicate human intelligence uh, are learned from data. So that means that um, this is a, a new paradigm. It's, it's not the traditional paradigm you have in programming where you, um, where you write programs, you, you tell the uh, the computer exactly to do what to do um, in, in, in commands, in if-else statements, and so on. Uh, but uh, here um, in machine learning, um, the computer learns these rules by itself from data. And um, deep learn learning uh, uh, deals with a special class of these uh, models um, with deep neural networks. And here's a, a sketch of, of uh, what a, a deep neural network looks like. And I won't go into the, uh, into the theory today, into the maths today of, of how this works in detail, um, but I would like to give you um, like um, uh, a basic understanding of, of, 
of what happens here, of what this model does. So um, you can think of this model as um, basically a, a mathematical function. Um, and this function takes an input um, that you see here in blue. Um, it, see, it process this, uh, this input through its neurons that you see here in, uh, yeah, like skin colored. And, um, and then it outputs a prediction that you see on the right here. So in this example, um, images are fed into the model and the output is the class of, of the image, of, of the object on the, on the image. So, so this is an example of, a, of what is called a classifier, which is a typical machine learning or deep learning model that classifies things into different classes. And well, how is the, the model uh, able to do this? Um, yeah, the, the fundamental idea behind machine learning is that these models are trained. So uh, the model is trained on examples and it learns from these examples uh, how to give correct outputs. Um, so initially the model is dumb. It, it just, it just uh, spits out random answers um, and then it makes errors, it makes errors and it learns from these errors and updates, the, uh, the model is updated continuously um, until it is able to perform uh, the task and give accurate out, out, outputs. And then we can uh, use this model um, to, to, to perform this task on new data. Um, yeah, so now we're gonna talk about what are the latest uh, trends in AI. Um, so there's been um, a development from, from very specialist models to, to more generalist models. And I'll start with an example of a um, specialist model. So this is similar to what we just saw. This is an image recognition model um, that, um, that, uh, that can distinguish between apples and pears. And these types of models, um, they were um, very successful maybe five, six years ago. Uh, everybody was talking uh, to about these models um, because there were breakthroughs in, in deep learning that made it possible uh, for this task to be performed um, well. Uh, before these models didn't really work, but then deep le learning came into play and suddenly it was possible to, um, for AI to distinguish um, between objects on, on images. And uh, there was a kind of a race um, between everybody wanted to make, create the better model and, and these models got better and better until they um, were better than humans at, at performing uh, this task of, of recognizing uh, images and classifying them. Oops. <clears throat> so um, these, um, models are specialist, meaning they are trained on a, um, on a data set, and this data set has to be annotated. So in this data set, we have, for example, images of apples and pears, uh, or we have uh, images of, of, of animals. And um, for every image, uh, we tell the model what it is. So it, it learns from these examples, and um, these examples are annotated, um, and, and we need a special special data set that, um, that has to be manual, uh, manually annotated by humans. And then this, uh, this model is, is specialized really only on the data that it has seen. So it has a, it has a, a very um, limited uh, knowledge of the world. It, in this case, it only knows apples and pears. So if we give it a new image, for example, of a teddy bear, then um, the, the, the model was, will uh, come up either with it's an apple or a pear because it has no, um, no knowledge of, of a teddy bear. It's really only limited to the data it has seen and to the classes it has seen to, uh, um, um, within, within training. 
And this is a, another example of a, a specialist model. Um, now this is a, a language model, so it deals with text. And um, yeah, you know the, this type of model from, from your phone probably. Uh, when, when you write an SMS, then um, uh, the, the, the phone might suggest the next word uh, for you. Uh, so this is um, a language model that is trained on text and learns how to predict uh, the, next, the next word from seeing a lot of text um, and seeing how, how sentences are composed. Um, and this is actually a very powerful type of model. You can do lots of great things with this, but again, it's limited in a way that it's, it can only deal uh, with text. And this is where multimodal uh, models come into play. So um, modality is, is a particular way of doing or, or experiencing something. Um, and multimodal models uh, combine different modalities uh, with each other, which means they can take different kinds of inputs, not only images, not only text, but they can, for example, combine images and text. So in this way, they are getting a little closer to human intelligence because human humans, um, that's how we perceive things. We don't perceive them only in one modality, but, but we, uh, we read, we see, uh, we hear, and all at the same time and process all these perceptions uh, at the same time. And we're now going to talk about one, um, one example of a multimodal model um, called CLIP. And um, this model um, deals with images and texts. Uh, it was developed by OpenAI, and OpenAI is one of the leading um, AI companies. It was uh, founded by uh, Elon Musk and, and others. And the CLIP model is basically, you can think of it like a combination of the two models that we saw before. So a combination of an image recognition model and of a language model. So it consists of two parts. Uh, and the first part is an an image encoder. Um, what does that mean? Um, well, it, it takes an image and then it processes it through the model and it comes out uh, with, with uh, a, a representation of this image. And we can think of this representation like a fingerprint because uh, this representation, it captures the essence of the image and it captures it uh, in numbers. So this fingerprint is actually um, um, a number of, uh, a vector of numbers. And the same happens uh, for text. So the second part of the model is a text encoder and the text encoder takes text and processes them through, through the model. And it again, learns a representation of this text that captures the essence of, of the text in, in a vector or in a fingerprint. And the model is trained then with the task of um, making these um, pairs. It has, it's trained with pairs of images and texts where the text is the description of the image. And it's trained with the task of making these as similar as possible so that the, the text that, that describes something um, gets the same or almost the same fingerprint as the image that shows something. And this model was trained on uh, 400 million uh, of these pairs of images and texts. Um, so yeah, basically it was trained on, the, on the, uh, all of the internet um, because of, uh, in the internet we have obvious, obviously a vast um, um, number of, of images that have um, descriptions attached to them that describe um, what, what we see on the image. And this is a great advantage uh, compared to the image recognition model we saw before that was trained on apples and pears, um, because here there no, there's no uh, human annotation is necessary. We can just use all the images 
uh, uh, straight from the internet, download them and train this model and, and use basically the whole, the knowledge of the world. The, the whole knowledge of the world is, is inside this model um, as far as pictures are co concerned and also as far as language is, in concern, is concerned. And this, um, this knowledge of the world is a, is a great foundation to, to build uh, different use cases on top of it. And we'll have a look at a, a few. So the first use case is um, what is called a zero shot classifier. And here we can solve the problem we had before that we couldn't uh, tell what a bear is. Um, now this model, as I said, is trained on the whole of the internet. So it knows all human concepts, everything that you can find on the internet, uh, this, this model knows. Um, so it's not limited to a particular data set, um, but, but it can be used as a classifier for any kind uh, of, uh, of objects, of, of images and their classes. Um, so it's called zero shot because um, it's not, it doesn't have to be trained. That's what it, what that, that's what zero shot means. It, it was of course pre-trained, we call this pre-training. So um, it was pre-trained on, on just these images from, from the internet. Um, but it then doesn't have to be trained on, on, uh, on examples for the spe specific uh, task that is uh, going to be used on. Uh, another use case is image captioning. So here um, the model takes an image and then comes up with its own description of the image. So it writes a sentence that describes uh, the image. And um, this is um, an extension of, of CLIP. So this is not possible with just only CLIP. It has to be extended. And an example of this is uh, CLIP CAP. And that's also possible in the other way around. So we can also use text uh, to tell the model what, uh, what it should draw. And then the, uh, the model generates its own image. So it's kind of like an artist. Yeah, we tell it to, uh, to, to, write, uh, to, to, um, to draw a picture for us and what, what we want to see on the picture and the model will draw um, uh, a picture for us. And uh, so it has this creative name DAL-E. And this um, again is, is, a, is a model. This is, this is an extension of CLIP that was also um, uh, published by OpenAI. And the last use case is the one that we're going to go into more detail uh, on, is the use case of image search. So um, uh, as I told you, we have these, the model pr produces these fingerprints. And these fingerprints are vectors. And we can do mathematics with these vectors. Um, and image search just uses the similarity between these vectors. So um, because we have similar image, uh, similar fingerprints, of images as we have of co corresponding texts, um, we can search in all direct directions. We can search for similar images to a given image, um, but we can also search for similar images to a piece of text or to, to a word or a sentence. Or we could um, search for text coming from an, from an image. So yeah, we can search in all directions um, which, which is, uh, we think, a, a great thing. And um, so now we're going to show you how you could actually do this yourself and do this on your own data. And Andrea is now going to take over and uh, show you this. Thank you, Mark. This was very interesting. I hope the next part will be interesting too. Just have to share my screen. Now we try to apply this uh, technology or see how we can apply this uh, technology to our own problems. Problems. There's some coding involved, but uh, don't be scared. I try to keep it easy. Uh, we, there's no need to reinvent the wheel. We can, can just use a, a library which has a uh, capability of a clip model built in. And we use a Python library. It's, uh, Python is the most common language to work uh, in 
machine learning. And the library is called uh, Zenith Transformers. I just go to the page of the library and let's see an example. Here you can see an, an, an image which illustrates the things Mark just said. There are the fingerprints, the blue dots and the red ones. Uh, and you see a similar uh, two ducks in the snow and in the picture, here's a text of two ducks in the snow and here's the image of two duck, ducks in the snow. And you see the dots are close together. Now we want to try the library. And uh, fortunately, there are some examples here we can just use. But uh, mostly you need a coding environment, but there is a coding environment available online. It's called Google Colab. If you have a Google account, you can just use this for free. You can just start. We click on the link. And then the coding environment opens. And we can just try this example. Uh, Google Collaboratory is a kind of a coding block there are content parts and there are code cells. You can run one by one. And I, I just explain you what, what's happening here. I, I want, don't want to go too far into detail because I guess you leave us. Here, uh, the library is just installed. Then uh, that's the code uh, to load the clip model we want to use later. And then we need a data set. Because we want to work with the data set, we want to explore the data set, we want to analyze it, and we want to search through the data set. And this example uses a data set from Unsplash. Unsplash is a website uh, who offers a stock image free stock images you can use on your website or you even use slides. And they provide a data set with 25,000 images. And we just want to search through these images. So don't be scared. It's just a little bit of code. And uh, what we have to do is we, we want to have to create these fingerprints, Mark told you. and. Uh, this code does creating fingerprints. It iterates through all the photos we have just downloaded and unzipped locally. And after we have this fingerprints, we create a search function that we can just use in a notebook. It's very high level. All we have to do is call this function. We can uh, execute these cells by just clicking on the play button. And I show you later how this uh, actually works. But here's a ni nice example. We are searching for um, the example from above, the two dogs playing in the snow. And uh, the model gives us all the matching images. And actually the data that contains some uh, dogs playing in the snow. So here they are. As you see, the input text is English, but uh, it's a multilingual model with about 50 languages. You can do this also in German. Here's the cat on the chair and in other languages too. I just scroll a little bit so you get an idea. So, okay. Here we are analyzing the Unsplash data set, but uh, the the interesting thing is uh, how can we apply this uh, technology, this image search, to the data, to your own data, uh, to our own data set, and maybe to the data from uh, the hackathon. So let's find this out. We uh, just uh, made another version of the notebook where we illustrate how this works. So. I just opened the notebook. It's the same notebook you just have seen, but it's slightly modified. Mod modified. So uh, we just need data, and we have a lot of data in Coding Da Vinci. We uh, have chosen one data set. It's about uh, photos. Just open it. 
What's this data set? It's a, let's scroll a bit, a little bit. It's a collection of historical portrait photographs. There are about uh, 23,000 high resolution scans. Just a nice amount of data we can play with. So uh, just let use data set. So how would you do this? Uh, on the bottom, there is a link to download the data. You just click on this link, it's called Daten. Then a file browser opens and we can explore the data set and all the photos. We can click on a photo and can download the photos one by one. But fortunately, there's a, a link, a download link where we can uh, download the whole archive of all photos. So we don't have the photos download manually. We just copy the download link here and paste it in this position. And then the archive is downloaded. It's about uh, six gigabyte. Uh, we have preferred, uh, we have already done this. After you have downloaded the data set, you unpack all the images in it. We already done this. And after you have uh, unpacked the images, you can browse through the images. Uh, the collaboratory has a built-in file browser, which is very practical. We can open this one and you, you see it's quite large, but it's okay. So then we do the stuff we uh, did before. We uh, install the library, loading the clip model, It takes some time. And then we uh, iterate through the photos in the folder and creating the fingerprints. We, here's an interesting part. We uh, downscale the images a little bit because they are high resolution. The model only needs a small fraction of it. It uh, needs, uh, requires a 400 by 400 pixels and that's enough that the model can recognize anything. So we already did this. Then we create our search function. It's actually does uh, compare uh, the uh, given, uh, the fingerprint of a given input, for instance, the text, uh, to all the fingerprints of the photographs. But now comes the interesting part. Let's use clip to find out something about these times. Because as Mark said, uh, the model is trained of a lot of data. The model uh, knows almost everything about the world. And for instance, all the social norms or what the styles and the fashion of this time. And let's just play around a little bit to find some interesting use cases. For instance, you could arrange all the photographs uh, in a new way. For instance, you can arrange the photographs by, by style. Let's just try it. Let's take a trivial example. Birds. Let's look. Are there any graceful birds in it? We just call a function. And you see The model outputs a matching images and it looks quite well. So let's uh, tr try another. Uh, let's arrange the photographs by another uh, perspective. For instance, um, the scenery, maybe uh, people posing with animals. And you see the model shows images of people posing with animals. You can just enter anything in, in this between these uh, quotes, and you can try it yourself afterwards. Oh, okay. Let's try another example. Uh, what about uh, maybe people hiding behind paper? Are there any images in the data set of people hiding 
my paper. Let's see, we ask the model. And yes, actually, there are, I don't know why, but they are in it. Maybe you will get some ideas for an application already. But now let's try some uh, more uh, serious examples because the, the model knows uh, much things about the time or, or the social norms. We, let's look, what uh, are people looking from this time? What are poor person, poor person looking or a rich person? Just ask the model, give me a photo of a rich person. Yes, the model shows us rich person. But we can do this uh, in an upside way. Let's ask the model, give us photos of poor person. And yeah, these are people from uh, the working class. So you get an idea what you can do with, uh, with this model and you can analyze the data from a different perspectives. You, you just need no metadata. These images are not annotated. We just need a raw image data. So I show you another example for maybe uh, what are the stereotypes of this time. And this, this works too, because the model knows the concept of stereotype and here see traditional looking people. You can even change the prompt and be more specific. What's this stereotype chairman? And so on. Another application would be to arrange the photos uh, by profession. For instance, we, we type in photo of painter. Let's see the model. Gives us some insights, yeah. Or photo of a musician. This all works. And the ideas are not limited. And it's also possible to analyze uh, more technical things because you, you see uh, it's mostly black and white uh, photos, but some are colorized. Let's find the photos that are colorized. We can ask the model by asking, give us colorized photos. And even this works, these are heavily colorized. Another example is, uh, is there any collage in the collection? We can just ask the model, are there multiple photos in one? You can just type in a simple question. And yeah, actually this. These are just some examples. Uh, you get, I think you get an idea and you can play around with this. Uh, as a last question, I asked myself, uh, what would a photo taken by Da Vinci would look like? We can even try this more abstract question. Photo taken by Da Vinci. And let's look whether the model gives us some interesting stuff. I guess. It looks good, but you have to decide for yourself whether this is a correct match. As a last example, I want to show you how to search by images. Uh, all the examples, in all the examples, we uh, used text as input, but we also can use uh, images found in the internet as input for our image search. Here I, I used a picture of a boy with a dog. And now let's ask the model search for an image that look like this image. And yes, this works. So uh, 
Thanks for your attention. I hope you get an um, understanding what you can do, how you can apply this uh, technology and how you can start without uh, very easily by just using a Google Colab Collaboratory. And we have put in a link here. You just, just click on this and try the notebook yourself. Thank you. Back to Mark. Thank you, Andre. That was great. Um, yeah, we're coming to uh, to the end of our uh, talk. Um, and uh, yeah, as you saw, um, you can uh, use uh, these these uh, this notebook that we prepared uh, yourself if you like. Uh, you'll get the link, and um, you can all, of course uh, ask us. Uh, any questions? We're also in the Slack channel, so if if you're trying stuff out and you have some problems, you you uh, can feel free to to ask us. And uh, yeah, we hope um, this was interesting for you, um, and we hope um, you have uh, now have a basic understanding of uh, of the concepts of AI and deep learning, and uh, know what a multimodal model is, um, and that you have understood the the idea behind the the clip model and why it's so powerful and and that you know how to use this uh, or yeah you have an idea how, how to use this clip model yourself and apply it to your own data um so that was that was it from us uh, for today um do you have uh, any questions Anybody? Uh, Elias, yeah? Uh, yeah, hello. Um, actually, it was not in the whole session, but I wanted to ask um, if also Google search is using, um, Google images search is using also this kind of um, uh, yeah, algorithms or artificial intelligence uh, tools in a way on the back end in order to search for images that are not annotated. So is this, is there a similar technology there? Yes, uh, yes, there is. Uh, actually, uh, Google wrote a blog about this, I think about a year ago. Uh, they use a model called MUM, M-U-M, um, which is similar to uh, to the clip model, but um, with Google, everything is secret, or not everything is secret, but the, 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 the technology behind the search system is secret. Uh, so we don't know this model, but it's of the same kind. It's also a multimodal model, um, and they introduced it uh, into their search engine. Exactly. Okay. But here, this is everything open. This technology. And this is, uh, yeah, yeah cl clip, uh, clip is open. Um, so, um, it's um, by, uh, by, by open AI, well, the name <laughs> suggests yeah. that things are open, but um, you actually, um, if you want it, there's a, an API by open AI. Um, if, if you want to use this, then you have to pay a little bit of money, but um, there's a great, um, there's a great um, site called Hugging Face. Um, we can also maybe pay, post, uh, maybe Andre, you could uh, post the link in, in the chat. And um, Hugging Face is a is a is a, um, a library for for very uh, many uh, uh, models that uh, opens up these models to the public. Okay, good. Thanks. And this model that Andre showed you before this, you can also download from from Hugging Face. I'm just looking if there are any more questions in the chat. <clears throat> what resources can be used during the hackathon except the data? Um, yeah, uh, uh, as I said, we 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 uh, will publish or this this collab notebook that Andre used uh, is published uh, so anybody uh, can can use it and if you have questions feel free to ask okay great i guess um that was it no more questions um thank you very much for listening um thank you for the nice comments and um um 
yeah, as uh, I, sa I said, we're we're a young company, uh, so we're we're very open uh, to any p person that might be interested in working with us in in any way. Uh, so feel free to to contact us. Uh, here is our email uh, and web address. And um, yeah, uh, I wish you a great day. Bye bye. <laughs>